Great. Well, I think we've got a we've got a bit of quorum, so maybe let's kick off. Sure. Again, hi everyone. It's really a pleasure to to have you all here. This is an exciting moment for for Open Earth and a lot of our collaborators working on this project. So we're delighted to be able to share um, uh, the project Open Climate uh, and this webinar. My name is Martin Weinstein. I'm the executive director of Open Earth Foundation. Um, we've got a big part of our team and our collaborators here online. We did the first in-person kickoff of this webinar uh, in COP27 just uh, a couple of weeks ago. I am, as I said, still in Egypt, um, processing a very, very intense two weeks for, for our line of work uh, and also everything that's been um, surfacing from a, the important climate negotiations. There's been there's been a lot of progress and loss and damage, as you may have seen from the news, uh, but also a lot of work in terms of the type of NGOs working around climate and um, and the relationship of non-state actors. So everything that's not a country, and that's one of the key aspects that we'll be sharing about today. So I'll I'll kick off by by giving an introduction of of Open Earth. Um, the Open Earth Foundation is a essentially an open source, big picture, planetary scale innovation lab. We really focus on identifying key leverage points in, at a global level of environmental challenges. And we work across multiple different uh, programs that, that I'll mention particularly soon. Um, and those leverage points uh, are on what digital and, um, and data infrastructure is needed. So our programs are around the aspect of climate, oceans, cities, and energy. And each one of those programs has specific projects what we will present uh, today is a lot of the outcomes of our climate program, which probably is around 50% of our work as an organization. Um, and it obviously represents the importance of, of the climate space um, and, and the urgency that it has. One of the key theses that we've had, because we are taking a systems approach and trying to identify the best role that us as a nonprofit organization working in open source technology can really fill a gap is the realm of, of helping the Paris Agreement tracking progress uh, and pledges, not just of countries, but also of, again, what we call non-state actors. This includes corporations, cities, subnational governments, um, and other type of organizations. And how do these all of these actors sort of work together in that process? So what we present, Open Climate Today, this has been almost like four years of, of, of work uh, because we try to really think how the next, let's say 35 years, the road towards net zero emissions, which based on our science need to be hit by 2050, uh, what type of, of global architecture is needed for that, particularly data architecture and digital in architecture. So we, we once we identify that issue and those gaps, particularly in terms of accounting accountability around the Paris Agreement, we move in and try to create community and, um, and also build platforms and networks that are peer-to-peer, -peer, open source, and other peoples to participate. Um, I think the next slide is we're, we're kicking over straight into why that is important. And my colleague uh, and collaborator GE from the Data Driven Lab will take over. It's a pleasure to have you uh, all here, and I hope you uh, enjoy and, and follow into the roadmap that we have ahead. Because of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Over to you, GE. Thanks, Martin, for the introduction. So, hi everyone. I'm GE from Data Driven Rao Lab. Um, we're collaborators with the Open Lab Foundation, and, and thanks so much for having me here. So, I'm just going to kick off and set the scene a little bit, provide a little bit more context on why non-state actors and why that's important in the context of the Paris Agreement. So I think, every, as everybody knows, you know, despite you know, international cooperation starting from the IPCC in 1990 and the UNFCCC um, starting in 1992, um, despite all those efforts to address the issue of climate change, we have seen global emissions increasing year on year up to even recently. Um, there is a little bit dip from COVID, but I think there are estimates that you know, that is actually starting to increase again in 2022. Um, next slide, please. And at the same time, while we're seeing these international um, efforts by city, uh, by countries and states, we are also seeing a lot of participation across different types of actors. And these include actors like NGOs. Uh, these include actors like research institutions, um, the youth, uh, businesses, etc. 
and this this is from COP. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, got the previous. Yeah, this is from COP. Starting from the Paris Agreement, there has been you know increasing participation across these different actors um, at the COP itself. Next slide, please. And apart from these individual actors participating in COP, we're also seeing international cooperative initiatives being launched almost every year since the year 2000 that are aimed to address you know issue of climate change and aim to promote solutions um, for climate change. Next slide, please. And that I think really highlights the importance of you know including non-state actors in this process. So we have you know the countries and the state actors participating largely through the UN framework, but a lot of these non-state actors such as cities, regions, companies are also being part of the solution against um, fighting climate change. And I think you know that increased participation highlights the importance of including those actors in the process. And of course, within the Paris Agreement itself, it is recognized that it is critical to engage uh, these actors as part of the process. And you can see this is just an abstract from the Paris Agreement itself, which recognizes how important it is to engage across governments, across different levels and across you know, different actor types like businesses, civil society and things like that. Next slide. And I think the hope from there is obviously that these um, actions from non-state actors contribute to what we call the ambition loop, where you know actions from non-state actors such as cities and regions show the state um, and show countries that you know there is this ground sort of action and pushes for increased ambition in the national determined contributions by countries. And having those um, NDCs updated to reflect greater ambition by countries then flow back up to the ground where cities, states, and regions um, seeing action from the country level also ramp up their own climate action. And that leads to these virtual cycles of including ambition and hopefully getting us to where we need to be uh, for, for to reach the goals of the Paris Agreement. Next slide, please. And I think tying back to why open climate is so important is just based on the fact that we are seeing so many actors pledging some form of commitments. We are seeing so many non-state actors making some form of climate action. It, the next step of those commitments then is to actually see whether they translate to action and how are different actors you know, progressing towards their actions. And of course, right now, with the current data and current infrastructure that we have, um, a lot of the data is very messy. A lot of data is not harmonized. It's not easy to work across different data sources, not easy to work across different data sets. And that's why, you know, as the space grows, the infrastructure to manage that data, the infrastructure to allow people to track progress um, for these different actors is also becoming more critical. And I think that's why you know it is so important for Open Climate Network and the work that we're doing here to be able to hold actors accountable to what they are pledged and to see the action, the um, steps that they are taking towards actually meeting those commitments. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Louisa to talk a little bit more about the uh, Climate Action Data Community and also about the digitally enabled independent global stock take. Thanks, G. And uh, apologies, I'm a little under the weather. So thanks for bearing with me. Um, and I'm Louisa Durkin. I work with Open Earth and I'm uh, our Climate Action Data Community Manager. So you can go uh, to the next slide. The open climate fits under a larger initiative um, that we've been working on with the Data Driven Environmental Lab and the Camda community. Um, so we just heard from GE about the importance of non-state actors uh, within the Paris Agreement. And the global stock take is the official mechanism to measure collective progress towards the Paris Agreement. The idea of DIGS or digitally enabling the independent global stock take um, is to utilize information available for these non-state actors, for subnationals and for companies, uh, and to move away from just the spreadsheets and PDFs as our main sources of accounting. Can um, head over to the next slide. Open climate uh, has at its core collaboration. So much of what exists today was designed through collabathons, collaborative hackathons uh, with nodes all over the world. Um, in the past year, the CAD 2.0 community has been a key community. So the Climate Action Data 2.0 community um, that among other things has contributed to a lot of the concepts we'll see in today's open climate platform. 
the Climate Action Data 2.0 community was developed through a declaration at COP26 with the goal of supporting the UNFCCC accountability mechanisms, in particular to encourage these mechanisms to be open source, interoperable, and designed for action. You can uh, go to the next slide, Greta. Thank you. Um, you can see on this slide that the full picture of the vision of what the CAD 2.0 community is aiming for. Um, and the green and blue circle down at the bottom, we have the nested climate accounting network, which is, which is exactly the piece of the puzzle that we're really excited to be launching today. I'm really happy to pass it off to my colleague, Martin, to explain the platform uh, in more detail. Thank you, Louisa. And of course, as we know, the digital space has helped transform so much of our lives so that it has a very important role to play in how we navigate this complex uh, system over the, over the coming uh, decades, really. Um, as Louisa mentioned, the global stock take is really at the heart of the, of the Paris Agreement. And so we really thought through and worked with a lot of groups in the, in the community and how um, we can support that, not just from the official process, but the but in an independent way. Independent because not only does it happen in, in parallel, but it also uh, includes actors like the non-state actors that are part of the official process. But also that we can leverage new ways in where um, digital technology can also help us leapfrog how we um, how do we access data, how we um, navigate it, and how we often discuss. We need a lot of insight, a very tangible, practical insight. On, on how to manage decarbonization processes. And for that, we need data. But for data to talk to each other, we need data infrastructure. And, uh, and then underpinning that is the digital infrastructure that also helps how a lot of these decentralized databases talk to each other as well. Next slide. So what we present today is, is the, the, the first part of this large vision, because it's really, uh, a large vision of an integrated climate accounting process, but we've gone a long way of putting a lot of those building blocks together and, and explained how that inside data, data and, and digital infrastructure work together and why more and more we really have to think about this as our digital public goods. That's, that's particularly our, our role as a par official partner of UNFCCC is to bring leadership into the architecture and the, the, the role of seeing accounting and accountability as, um, as a public good. So just as we lay down infrastructure for cities that are public, like roads and highways, we need to do the same thing for our digital space. The way the Open Climate Network works is there is a public, um, freely accessible um, view, which is the Explore page, and that's where we can see information of the different data aggregators and or data providers, and that's properly aggregated. Uh, and we've worked with uh, a large uh, networking community of, of data providers, but it also has a section around accounting, and that's specifically for actors to log in and, and bring in verified data. And Joaquin will explain a lot of how this fits into our roadmap over the coming months, because we really are in a bit of a sprint towards next year's COP, which is the global stock take. And we wanna make sure that, that really are able to uh, build a, a full-fledged uh, model that, that helps the world understand the, 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 the way that digital innovation and open source technology can help us in that process. On the right-hand side is the vision of this nested accounting. Uh, GE articulated the importance of this ambition loop of how the more non-state actors are able to um, accomplish their pledges, and there's been a lot of pledges from uh, corporations and cities, uh, but there's been not a very clear mechanism in how we're going to keep them accountable or keeping ourselves accountable because we're all like individuals and organizations. We are all non-state actors, but the but the the more we are able to achieve that the more we're helping countries achieve their nationally determined contribution. Therefore, we can all be part of the Paris Agreement. And so for that, uh, one of the key aspects is to understand that we're all connected by virtue of the nested relationships of the jurisdictions in which we're at. I am uh, calling from um, a hotel in Egypt in the Sinai Peninsula, and that's inside the Egyptian country. And normally when I'm in California, I'm talking from our office in LA, which is part of California, which has its own pledge inside the United States. So 
obviously everything rolls up to the atmosphere, which as we often say, is the ultimate ledger that uh, keeps us all in check, which is, it's really where the accounting of emissions of CO2 parts per million that determines the temperature uh, targets that we've uh, set based on cutting edge science. Next slide. So that's sort of the, the introduction of, of open climate, but I think uh, Joaquin will, will dive a little bit more into the demo and the roadmap of what lies ahead in this exciting journey. Over to you, Joaquin. Yeah, I'll, I'll share my screen. I think it'll be easier. Um, so I'll stop yours. Um, so I can share some of the, the platform and explain what we're doing. But mainly, uh, I explain part of the work we have so far and part of the work we are um, working towards, right? Building. So if I can get a thumbs up that we're seeing on the screen fine for my the rest of my yeah. list, great. Perfect. I guess starts. Right. So this is the, the landing page of Open Climates. As you can see, um, we have a, a, a series of drop downs, right, that relates to the nested um, structure of how we're building the accounting system. Um, but also, the first thing you can see is that there's a, a go um, a card for Earth, right? So we want to make sure that everything is is nested and seen from the perspective of Earth, because everything in the end needs to add up to what's happening on the atmosphere, right? We're trying to, to to reduce emissions, right? So the first thing you can see in the platform is this card, right? It shares a bit of the emissions at a global level. It shares the budget we have left based on a target, right? Of how much we can emit, the temperature increase, and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's very important because we want to make sure that we're evaluating what a country is doing, a region, or a city is doing, how that relates to what needs to be done actually on the atmosphere if we want to make sure we reach a 1.5 or 2 degrees um, future, right? Other things you can see in the landing page before I go into, into what you can see from the inventories is there's this pop-up, right, inviting you to collaborate. That's something really um, important in our platform because we want to make sure people collaborate with us. We want to make sure we have the best data available, most data available, as much coverage as possible. And also, this is open source, right? So we want people to collaborate and build with us, right? So you have a couple of call to actions, Right, that invite you to collaborate. I'll go into those afterwards. Um, so, main things you want to be able to see in the platform for now are um, emissions and pledges or targets for different actors. So, for example, let's go to Canada. Right, we'll see the actor Canada. It's beside Earth. Right, so we can relate back to the nested structure. This is the main way you're going to be navigating for now um, to the different actors. As we go forward, we're going to be improving our search uh, features. We're going to be able to have filters. We're going to be able to do much more. Uh, but for now, the main the main navigation is the nested level cards, we call them, right? So we're going to be able to see how the emissions from Canada relate to the global emissions. You can see also how relevant of a player Canada is in population's uh, perspective, right? Just to get a sense of a context of how much uh, that weighs. And you can see some of the pledges, right? As you go into the details of that actor, you can see the source where the data is coming from and the year, right? We have, in this case, two sources, a lot of years. Primo has a lot of coverage for years. You can see the emissions at that level. Um, I think this is loading, yeah. You can see for a different source as well, right? So you can compare, you want to compare Prime up to UNFCCC. You can see the emissions they have. Based on those emissions, you can see the emissions per capita. You can expect the methodologies the different uh, sources are using, right? So we want to make sure we are as transparent as possible with the data we're getting, right? This is data was aggregated from third party sources that have public available data. The idea is that you can search for this and you can go to that source if you want to learn more. But we have some quick summaries of the methodologies they use in case it's relevant. We also have contextual data, right? This helps uh, putting into context the, the actor we're looking at, right? So for example, for Canada, we know it has like 0.5% of the global population. That means it's almost 40 million people, right? Relevant GDP. Um, and you can see the pledges they've done, right? So they've pledged to reduce uh, emissions by 40% um, in 2030 compared to their levels at 2005. In the future, as we go, we wanna make sure we can be able to track that performance, right? We wanna be able to show uh, um, the historic emissions, how they've evolved, right? You want to be able to have even better contextual data, right? How does Canada compare to other relevant actors that are similar? Um, so we could choose, for example, let's say another country, right? Could be Spain, you can have data for it as well, right? In this case, same sources, 
Um, but let's go back to Canada, which it's, it's an example we use a lot, right? Um, so once you're in Canada, you can start filtering through the different regions in that country, right? To be able to get to the non-state actors we we're talking about, right? These non-state actors are really relevant players. They have a lot of leverage to, to change their actions. And it's important to, to highlight what they're doing, but also to uh, incentivize them to reduce their emissions, right? British Columbia is one of such players, right? In this case, we have emissions for the years. We have different sources as well. We Once again, we get contextual data, right? So um, British Columbia is 13% of Canada's population. It's a relevant player. There are other relevant players in Canada, right? So we could check, for example, if you want to know. So, right. Uh, greater population, uh, and we could go through them, right? Um, and once we once we go into one of these regions, we can drill down into cities, right? Which are really relevant there. Um, so if you go to a city, for example, we can go. We have a list of different cities, right? Go to Vancouver. As you see, we're starting to see data gaps that we have, right? So some of these data gaps are data sources that are in a pipeline that we need to add we haven't added yet we're it's a work in progress but some of these data gaps is data that's not easily available we haven't found uh, we need people to help us get right so for example this case we're seeing it's not available right this is for us it's not a failure that we don't have the data right this is a call to action right so we need people that have access to this data to be able to share it publicly and so we can aggregate it right the data we use has a common data schema that you will, will We'll go into afterwards, right? We're harmonizing and aggregating data into the same data set that can be easily navigated. Um, so as we see uh, in this case, we have uh, data for regions and for country. We're missing some for cities. Um, we have some contextual data, right? It shows Vancouver is really relevant for British Columbia and will be really relevant to have the data. But if we went, for example, to other countries, let's say we can go to Argentina, where I'm in right now, right? And we want to go to uh, region like Corrientes, you don't have data here, right? And this is the regional level. Um, so these are things that we want to make sure we get. And this is how I'm going to go after this into this button, but this is how people can collaborate and share data with us. Um, so we're looking for data, data sets. First, from countries, even though we have coverage for most countries, it's relevant to have even more, right? So we're able to know um, what different sources are saying. We want uh, coverage for regions and provinces as well. Um, in this case, can be uh, people that prepare data sets, aggregated data sets, researchers, but also we're looking for city officials, people in governments, they have their own data, they know they've been measuring it, maybe they haven't made it as publicly as available for us to find, I want them to, to share with us, right, so we can, we can connect. And then the other thing we have, which is we're looking for and building towards, even if this first phase we've been working mostly um, towards uh, government data, right, is going towards companies' data. So as you see here, we have right country, region, and city. But we also have a swap here in which you can swap to go to a company, right? So in this case, we want to make sure we can map uh, different companies and be able to find them and see how their their actions and based on the facilities they have in different regions are adding up to the inventories of the regions and then to countries and then to the planets. Um, as you can see, we also have pledges for subnationals, right? Uh, what they've targeted. As, as, you, as I've mentioned, we want to make sure we're able to track it. And we're not only looking for collaborators for data, right? Since open source, we're also looking for collaborators for code. So if people are, are interested in adding visualizations for what we're doing, that's super relevant and that's something we're super interested in. Um, so next part, collaboration, right? So we're in Explorer. Here there's a pop-up that's been bothering most for quite some time. And this is, it's asking us to collaborate and be part of the independent stop taking effort. For now, by clicking this, you go into a form to get some details and get us in contact with us. And we can help out seeing either helping out harmonizing data and aggregating it, or maybe uh, giving uh, guidelines for people to, to harmonize the data and just give the data harmonized so it can be easily contributed and, and added into uh, the platform. Um, and there's another part that's relevant. So it's the login here, right? So I'm not going to go into this too much right now, but we're doing an invite only pilot right now that's based mainly for companies to be able to share verified data that ends up being stacked into inventories of the region they're in, right? So we're using, um, we're, we're piloting that to get verified data from third parties. So it's not just self-reported data. And that's something we're gonna go into afterwards. Um, we're working also uh, into making this data easily downloadable and shareable, but for now, something that can be, I don't know if you, yeah, something that can be easily shared is the URL can be easily uh, linked 
and share it with people, right? So it's something you can link and you, if you share the details page, this, for example, for British Columbia, but if I wanted to share um, another different, uh, let's say, a country, I would get, let's say, let's China, right? We we'll get the region there. We can go to Beijing Xi, right? And I can share this, I can share maybe um, a city, right, as well there. Um, so that's mainly it for the demo um, of what we have. I'm going to be sharing some stats now that we have on the on the slide. I know, Greg, if you want to uh, share that back and I and I can talk over the slides if that works. Yeah, of course. Uh, one second. Great. So, um, so far in the network, and this is probably outdated because it's stats from last week when we're adding, uh, aggregating data sets daily almost. We have more than 130,000 actors mapped, right, in the platform in that nested structure from countries, regions, and cities within. Uh, we have more than 60,000 emission data points that range from the year 2050 to 2021. I think we have also some projected data until 2030. Uh, we have more than 12, uh, 2,000 climate targets, right? targets that people uh, pledge that they're going to reduce emissions for this different type of factors, including some national actors. And uh, we have more than 170,000 contextual data points for the different uh, data that uh, helps you understand the relevance of some countries or, or actors. Um, and then going a bit further into what we're building, right, into the, the roadmap. So right now, our main phase is trying to finish the importing new data sets, most data sets, mainly from some national actors as we can, and improving visualizations, right? So we're working on making very easy to visualize data in better ways, right? Add more charts, be able to differentiate through sectors, through scopes, uh, see historic charts, um, be able to share data easily through downloading and, um, and sharing the links. And what we're building uh, as we go into the future is more data collaboration tools, right? This is a network that's open, it's open source, open data. We want people to easily be able to share data that they have, data that they found, be able to compare it, uh, be able to find where data comes from and be able to evaluate it. Um, there are things we're working on, which I, I share, share the, the login screen, is for verified corporate reporting, which we're piloting there with the government of British Columbia some companies in the region uh the idea is to be able to integrate um data from corporates that's been third party verified and be able to show it right and show it's trustworthy and be able to show it's traceable so showing where the data provenance comes from for those uh, third party actors um our things we're piloting and working is on spatial nested accounting right so so far the structure for nested accounting is being done through relationships between uh, nested entities right let's say you have a country the country has a list of entities that are inside of it, that are provinces or states, and those have a list of cities that are inside of it, right? But what I'll be able to, to do is a system in which you can easily um, add up inventories just by drawing up a polygon or understanding the polygon, um, or a geographic polygon, right? And be able to have new, uh, newly defined regions that you want to compare the inventories that might not be the traditional uh, sets, and be also to easily see how, for example, um, the emissions of a sector how they can be added up right just by having that that polygon and the other part working on is a lot of the big problems in sharing especially what's corporate data right is having a way to um have transparency while preserving privacy which is super important for for corporates because it might affect their business models um so building tools for that is something that's relevant so that they are so companies can be more incentivized to share data without having to uh, worry about what this is about their operations uh, for their competitors. Um, so I think that's mainly for roadmap, unless someone wants to chime in uh, what we're working on, but that's part of the things we'll be building on in uh, this year and the following, in the following time. So if that's it, I think I can go back to G to talk a bit, talk a bit more about the data schema, right? Which is where most of the magic happens for for this and how the data is harmonized and aggregated. So go ahead, Jean. Thanks, Joaquin. This is a great demo. And I think now I'll just talk a little bit more about what's underneath the hood in terms of the data itself. Um, so just talking a little bit more about the key aspect of the open climate data model. So it is an open source data model that was designed to allow to track uh, climate action across 
you know, the different actors that Joaquin had showed. And some key aspects like Martin and Luisa had mentioned previously, it was designed to allow for this process to uh, take part, take place parallel to the global stock take and allow for that independent climate accounting to see where non-state actors stand in terms of their actions and commitments. Um, the data model is also meant to be flexible, which uh, like Joaquin had shown in the roadmap, that will allow you know, that hierarchical nesting and like, geographical nesting of different actors. And of course, allows uh, for expansion to accommodate new data sources and of course, potentially even like novel data sources like remote sensing, satellite imagery, and things like that. Um, it is also an open source and collaborative effort within the climate action data community. Um, so we had actually uh, launched it out at the, one of our climate action data uh, community calls a few months back and received great feedback from the community which we have then incorporated into the data model. So it is a living document. It is something that will continue to evolve as we continue to expand the network of data sources and data providers um, in the Open Climate Network. Uh, next slide, please. So just to give an overview of the schema that's underneath the hood, um, so I'm probably not gonna go into details here. And um, this is kind of like a broken, uh, broken up piece of the entity relationship diagram that's the actual data schema and data model. I've dropped the link to the full diagram so that you can see how all the different relationships map between the different tables. But essentially within the data model itself, we have several key categories of data that we are tracking. So firstly, the most important part is the actor itself. So who the actor is, uh, what, what type of actor they are, you know, whether it's a city or a region um, or company, and also um, where the actor sits in terms of that hierarchy. Uh, of course, including some identifier information as well as various versions of the actor's names. Um, then the other part would be the public information, such as the um, geographical boundaries, where is the lead long of the actor, what is the population and GDP and so on uh, for the actor. Now, with regards to the climate action that's being tracked, right now the focus is on the targets itself that the actor is making and the emissions of the actor. So what are the kind of historical emissions and what are the um, annual emissions that the actor has uh, emitted, you know, across several years. So with regards to the emissions, you know, we keep track of the total emissions and of course, uh, broken down that, breaking down that emissions into different scopes and sectors, uh, which we are trying to incorporate into the platform itself. With regards to the target, we are keeping track of, you know, what is the actual a uh, percentage reduction that they have pledged, what, is, what type of target it is, whether it is an absolute emissions target or an intensity target, for example, and of course, what is the baseline of that target. And last but not least, I think with any project, the very important part is the metadata, uh, where that data comes from, what is the data source, what is the methodology, for example, used to calculate the emissions, uh, what are certain things that we need to uh, you know, be cognizant of as we use that data with regards to both the uh, data source with regards to both emissions and who's publishing that data. So that's just a very high level overview of the data model. Feel free to, you know, um, go to the GitHub and look at it in full and also, you know, uh, provide any kind of feedback on the data model itself. And on that note, you know, I think I'll hand over to Evan to talk a little bit more uh, about how to collaborate and contribute to Open Climate. Thanks, Yi Yi. I'm Evan Pedromo. I'm the Director of Open Technology at Open Earth Foundation. Next slide, please. I'm gonna be talking about how to contribute to open climate. There are a lot of moving parts in open climate and a lot of ways that uh, external parties can contribute, both by uh, submitting front and back end code, providing data, helping us with documentation, expanding the schema, as well as in a more broad part of our uh, ecosystem, developing API clients or data commons clients. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of contributing to the front and back end code, we have a repository on GitHub that has all of the code that makes open climate work. Our UI and API are built with JavaScript, very accessible for full stack developers. All of our code is under the Apache software license 2.0. So very liberal uh, open source license, making it very uh, easy to contribute to. Uh, we use GitHub flow for participation and coordinating work. That means that uh, folks who want to contribute just need to post an issue on GitHub, create a pull request based on their issue, and then it will be reviewed and merged by the core contributors. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this is a uh, fascinating view of our uh, Open Climate uh, GitHub repo. Next slide. Um, important work for us right now, especially on the front and back end code, is identifying bugs and providing fixes for them. We are somewhat interested in supporting new features. Um, we have uh, within our repository issues that are tagged good first issue. We think that this is a great place for people to get started with the, um, with the work. Next slide, please. In terms of data contributions, we use the same technique for contributing data that we use for contributing code. GitHub flow works in this case too. We have a subdirectory in the open climate directory uh, called Harmonize, and that's where we keep raw and processed data sets. The processed data sets are in a specific format where we have one file per table in our schema in a CSV format, and we have an importer that makes it possible to synchronize the, that kind of data. So we think that this is a really easy way to get started with, the, uh, uh, with contribution. As has been mentioned before, we've hit um, we think we have covered a lot of the uh, worldwide data sets that are available, and we're starting to dig into per country data sets. We have about 30 data sets in our pipeline right now for different countries uh, and uh, states around the world, but we're especially interested in country data sets where we may not have dug in uh, very deep already. Uh, we are looking for emissions and targets by corporate actors, emissions and targets by city and administrative units. Often this kind of data is available from national environmental tracking agencies, but sometimes it's reported by individual actors in text or machine readable form. Always for us, as Xi mentioned, provenance is of the utmost importance. We want to be able to show primary sources for the data that we include. Next slide, please. In terms of documentation, we do have uh, opportunities for uh, contributing documentation to the Open Climate Project. Right now, most of our documentation is uh, as markdown files within our repository, so this is very developer-oriented. <clears throat> we also have a wiki within the GitHub repository. This can be a good way to contribute uh, quick uh, documentation. Next slide, please. Uh, documentation. Uh, that we need. We're, we're still refining our installation uh, documentation, especially installation on different platforms uh, for development uh, and testing. We're trying to collect FAQs, frequently asked questions. Another thing that could be really helpful is translation to uh, other languages. This is the world's problem, and we're looking for contributions from uh, global participants. Uh, Xi mentioned the schema. We think the schema is such an important uh, part of this uh, project that is a separate repository within, uh, uh, within GitHub. We also include all the same information within our main repository, so it's accessible there, uh, but we want issues and tracking to happen within the Open Climate Schema repository. We use SQL files as the primary source and structure for our um, uh, for our uh, schema. And again, we use GitHub flow in order to uh, track contributions. So posting an issue, making a pull request, and then waiting for review and merge. Next slide, please. Uh, for the schema, there are a few things that we're looking that we're looking at for next versions and that we could probably use some help uh, with. One is uh, making, we are uh, focusing on climate actions and refined coverage of climate actions. Those are future actions by um, actors. Uh, we are looking for breakdowns by other criteria, such as gases emitted, and making sure that we can combine the different kind of breakdowns in meaningful ways. So this is a little bit tricky with the schema design. We think we're doing okay so far, but we're, we still, still think that there are some uh, refinements to do. Um, the support for land use uh, in our schema is all right, but we'd like to make it better. <coughs> Excuse me. And then finally, more contextual information for corporate actors, uh, private actors, and their um, uh, and sites and facilities that they use. Next slide, please. Um, one slightly different way to make a contribution is to use the Open Climate API. This is a web API 
that's used by our front end, and that is available for third party uh, developers to use. It uh, maps, um, it has mainly information about the actors and actor hierarchy within Open Climate, but it also includes rich data per actor, including targets, emissions, contextual data, uh, synonyms and names, as well as identifiers. This next slide, please. This can be really interesting for third party access to do data coverage analysis, gap analysis, geographical relationships, geographical accounting. We think that there's a real opportunity for some uh, creative use of this uh, API. And finally, next slide, we have uh, uh, the database that Open Cl Climate uses with the schema is available through o OS Climate. The OS Climate Data Commons is a federation of uh, databases that's available worldwide uh, through osclimate.org. And uh, this is another way for third-party developers to uh, access the data and build on it. Next slide, please. We are just getting this data commons uh, effort off the, off the ground. So the biggest thing we need right now is reference implementations of using uh, op uh, open climate through the uh, OS climate data commons. That's it for me. Great. Well, thank you everyone, uh, all the speakers uh, for this amazing job and the entire Open Climate team for this last uh, very busy month. Uh, uh, it was a yeah, long way to our run here. Um, so here in this slide, we are leaving a QR code um, that you can scan uh, to find uh, the collaborator guide. Uh, it's a Notion page where you could find uh, yeah, everything needed to understand how to collaborate, all the relevant links, um, and yeah, different uh, the different things that we need for open climate, as mentioned, uh, even just mentioned. Uh, we would love you uh, to have you here collaborating with data. That's are definitely welcome. Also, uh, you can feel free to email us on openclimate uh, at openearth.org. Uh, uh, for any questions, any ideas, any ways to collaborate uh, that you would like to bring us. Uh, so we will have a Q and A ses session if needed. I know there is one question already in the chat, uh, but feel free if you have any other question, please uh, write it uh, there or in the chat, uh, so we can start uh, replying the first one that we have here. And please again, feel free to uh, write any other questions you may have. Um, so here, the first question is, have the major uh, companies for region been mapped or invited to participate, or are companies added once they send a collaboration request? I can start uh, replying, and also if any other from the team wants to add something, feel free. Um, so my first yeah, answer here is, we, we as, as Joaquin said before, we have been focused mostly in the countryside, as this first um, version of the data <clears throat> platform. And definitely next step is to focus, it, like focus uh, on companies because <clears throat> right now we don't have a lot of information from the companies. So we didn't <clears throat> did a proper mapping yet. And definitely that's something that would be great to have from anyone that wants to help with this mapping. Um, but yeah. Uh, Greta, yeah, if I, I could think, just step in. Yeah. Sure, we sure, do yeah. have uh, we do have corporate reporting uh, from yeah. different national agencies. So uh, US mm -hmm. EPA, EC in Canada. I think we've got Australia, New Zealand, UK. Um, it's a really rich source of information for those countries that do require emissions reporting. Two things that are um, uh, less useful about it is that typically it's very high level rollups. Uh, so more detailed information can be really helpful. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely Great. our um, also, next focus. Yeah, adding up to it. So um, the work we're doing right now with the BC Gov uh, in British Columbia, Canada, is a pilot by invitation only for companies in the mining and energy sector, right? They want to uh, report and verify their reports. Uh, so that's like a very small uh, tip of the iceberg for that, for that process. Um, as we go map, as we go increasing the size of the pilot, we'll be inviting other regions to to start inviting their corporates. Um, 
But there's also some work that's being done, uh, for example, for Race to Zero and other initiatives like that that have working with data for corporates. We have they've mapped the most relevant companies, maybe in uh, from a revenue standpoint. Um, and thus, as we go forward, we'll try to get the data also uh, imported. Um, so, so that's that's part of the, the initiatives we're doing related to, to corporate data. Yeah, but also for the second part of the question, like, yeah, definitely, if any company wants to bring information, it's also definitely welcome. Yeah, definitely. So I think we, yeah, we have this uh, question reply. I don't know if there is any other question. If not, we can end the webinar here. Yeah, just to to emphasize, uh, we want we want people to to feel open to collaborate with us, right? Collaboration can take many forms uh, to to participate. So feel free to reach us, reach out through the either the email that we have. You want to go back to the slide, just have the email and the QR code. You can reach through there. You can reach through uh, GitHub if that's what you're more familiar with. That's probably the most effective way to collaborate because that's where most of the actual uh, building takes place. But if you want to collaborate, don't see a quick or a clear way to do so. Um, just reach out and we will we'll show you around. Um, collaboration can take the form of just feedback from using the platform, putting us in contact with people that might have data, thinking about um, data in one of our working groups um, for climate data, um, or feature ideas of things you would like to see as a user. Um, so everything is, is welcome. Uh, we're trying to build this together we're building this for the planet and we need everyone to be working towards it um so just feel free to collaborate i know if we've shared the the notion link on the chat if you want to share that uh great as well uh we have it or i can i can share it maybe that's easier yeah please. um I'm sure it's... since you're sharing data this is uh an external notion site that has most of the links they're most will point to different parts of GitHub, uh, but they also have some links to join the climate action data community that you're interested in, have some emails that we have, uh, newsletters that you can join. Um, that would have, if we also have some open issues in GitHub of recommended features that Evan was showing us first issues to tackle. If those seem interesting, you can also start working on those. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of work to do, uh, and we're happy to have everyone work alongside us. I'm sure once we post this online, we'll have all the links uh, shared um, on the on the YouTube video as well, so you'll be able to to go to the links under the video and find where you can collaborate. Well, if there is no further questions, uh, thank you very much for everyone uh, for joining today. Uh, we will also leave this recording on YouTube for everyone that wants to review it after. So feel free to share uh, the presentation after. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone and let's collaborate. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations Thanks. everyone that's been part of this amazing journey. Look forward to next steps.